Hi, I'm Tony and welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Gerbing Microwire Pro XRL Hybrid Heated Gloves. So Gerbing are one of the first names in electric heated motorcycle clothing. They've been going since 1976 and really would be considered amongst the pioneers of it. And they use their latest technology, that's the micro wire pro bit, which means thinner wires to reduce the bulk and increase the comfort as you've got the heat passing around. So the heat is conducted around your fingers and around the backs of the hands, which is the areas that are exposed most to wind blast while you're riding. And on these gloves, in standard trim, that power is provided by your bike's battery. You can alternatively power these from battery packs, standalone separate battery packs, which are available as an optional extra, but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. As I said, in standard, they come with the cable that connects to the battery. There's a harness that you wire to the bike's battery with ring terminals, and then another cable, like a Y cable, they call it, which you feed through your jacket arms and then the two socket outputs come out at the top to plug into the gloves. The female end of the connector is tucked inside a pocket zipped into the cuff. Plug the power from the battery into there and zip it inside the pocket there. To turn the gloves on, press and hold the control button at the cuff until it lights up blue to show that it's in its lowest power setting and then you cycle through the heat settings with a press. It's a bit longer than a tap. Moves it through to amber, which is the middle of the three settings. Same again, takes it to red for the highest setting. Then again, takes it back to the bottom, level one. And if you want to turn them off, press and hold. We're not scientists here at Sports Bike Shop, but we do like to carry out a little kind of experiment just to illustrate how much heat you might be able to expect from a heated garment. So what we do is we put a temperature probe inside the glove, we measure the ambient temperature at the time and then see how much it increases as we turn on the gloves and increase through the levels. The ambient temperature inside these gloves when we started our experiment this morning was 20 degrees Celsius. Turning them on into level one increased that to 30 degrees Celsius inside which is quite a significant step and then taking up to level two made an even bigger jump of 20 degrees up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is a really significant amount of heat to have from a glove. Then moving up into the third level, red level three, the highest, took them up to 60 degrees, which is the highest we've recorded from any of the gloves that we've done this experiment with so far. From the customer reviews, there's a lot of people who say they've never used level three because they find that it's just too hot and they've not needed to go to that level. Level two has been enough. There are a few within there who say that the gloves don't provide enough heat. There's always going to be a certain amount of subjectivity within it and different people have different sensitivities and different expectations. But we would say 50 degrees from a heated glove is going to make life a lot more comfortable in low temperatures. As I said earlier, you can alternatively power these from battery packs that are zipped inside the pocket where the connector goes. You won't be able to ride for as long with that as if you were connected to the bike's battery, but it does give you extra flexibility. It means that you don't have to be hooked into the bike. Not everybody wants that. There are three options of battery pack available. The base level is a one amp hour battery pack, which costs 60 pounds and Gerbing estimate that will last between one and three hours, depending on the heat setting that you have on the gloves at the time. There's a two amp hour battery pack, which is 90 pounds, and that lasts from two to four hours. And then the final one is a three amp hour battery with the most output. That's 115 pounds, but that lasts between three and eight hours on Gerbing estimates, again, depending on which level of heat output you have. So the gloves themselves are actually quite impressive. Heated gloves used to have a really bad reputation that the heating element of them was good, but they didn't stand up as motorcycle gloves. Um, you'd get much more comfort and flexibility from a normal motorcycle glove than from a heated glove. But most people have really upped their game in recent years, and these gloves are the same. Gerbing have really improved their offering. 
They're made from an aniline leather that's very soft and supple. It's 0.6 millimetres thick, so it offers good protection and good comfort. The palm is reinforced with grippy silicon sections across where you would contact the handlebar grip and also here where you contact the, the brake levers and the clutch levers to give you a little bit of extra insulation. And there's plastic reinforcement around the heel of the palm. You get a visor wipe, a rubber visor wipe on the left thumb, so you're able to properly clear your visor of rain. Again, that's to my mind an essential for winter riding that a glove provides that. They fasten with a fairly conventional wrist restraint which is under the hand and then a cuff here. There's also a drawstring closure at the top. Now that's quite crucial on these gloves because in standard trim connected to the bike battery we think they are likely to be narrow enough to fit inside most textile jackets if that's the way you prefer to wear them but if you go for the optional battery packs it's very unlikely you'll fit them inside a jacket cuff and Gerbing make quite a good point of that saying don't expect them to fit inside. Even if you can fit them inside, doing so means that you lose access to the control switch. So you need to hope that you can get the right setting before you set off and that it's going to remain the same all the way to the end of your journey. Realistically, you're going to be wearing these outside a jacket cuff. The problem with that inherent is that rain is able to run inside the glove and you get wet hands. So this drawstring here is fundamental to the performance of these gloves. It allows you to pull the gloves tight and get a good seal against the top of your jacket and do everything you can to keep the rain out. Overall the gloves are CE level 1 rated including the knuckle protection so they've got all of the protection you need and the legal status to ride in places like France where it's compulsory. And when it comes to heated kit, Gerbing are a really reliable name. They offer great backup and they look after people if their gloves or their other heated garments go wrong. They offer good support and they've been at it for a long time so they know what they're doing. I hope that gives you a detailed picture of the Gerbing XRL hybrid heated gloves. But if there's anything you feel we've missed, please pop a question in the comments below and we'll look into it for you. Thanks for watching.